Hey, Monet. All right. Got a few little minutes here before I want to wait until a few more people come on. I had quite a few registrations. So, oh, you saw me working, right? I take my notes from you. <laughs> um, so anyway, I had quite a few registrations, quite a few people who responded to this virtual meetup and, you know, meet and greet just to chat with me about house calls, to chat with me about writing books, about just, you know, whatever types of business things. And so this is what this is about. This is all about you. This is all about all the folks who constantly like send me messages in the inbox. And I just, honestly, I just can't get to them all. So I figured, why don't I just do a big talk, you know, Q and A, meet and greet live on Facebook, live on my new YouTube channel and just sort of open it up for everyone who has questions about house calls, Viva house calls, right? You know, there's always something, um, some question about house calls, some question about billing, some question about, you know, how did you start um, your publishing company? You know, how did you write your books? You know, that whole, whole thing. So I just said, you know, rather than just sort of piecemealing it out one person at a time, since it's so many questions, I said, let me just do a live Q&A. It's the first time I've ever done a live Q&A. And so um, we'll see how this goes. I got all dressed up for y'all. <laughs> you know, I put my little makeup on, you know, and um, fix my little hair and, you know, just kind of, you know, say, well, if we're going to be all official, I might as well be official. Got my little glitter going. So um, I hope you guys are, you know, here for your questions. And so let's go. Um, hey, Dwayne. Hey, Sabrina, Crystal. All right. So, you know, there's really no real format about it. I just kind of wanted it to be um, just you know, for you to, to ask me the questions. So many people, like I said, have come with questions. So um, this is the time to ask me because I normally um, don't have a lot of time during the day to, to answer questions. That's why I have um, the consultation, you know, situation set up on my website, whereas you can pay for a consultation, which is about $250 an hour. So, you know, it's just, these days, you know, we got, listen, Rona in these streets. So I said, listen, I, let me just give stuff away. Give, give the knowledge away. This is a big pick my brain session. Hey, Rashida, this is a big pick my brain session. So let's utilize it, you know, ask me the questions here. And then it's here for everyone. Everyone can see, everyone can, um, you know, ask the questions and then we can just kind of go from there. Right. So, um, you know, I think the most common question I have is, and let's just start, I'll just start and you can probably just jump in anywhere because this is very, very informal, even though my glitter makes it a little formal, wouldn't you say? All right. <laughs> so um, a lot of people say, well, you know, what, um, you know, where did you, where did you, where do you get started? You know, did you have a literary agent? Did you have, you know, someone, you know, do you have a PR company? You know, we, we were talking about books now being an author. And so the answer is mm, yes and no. I've had a PR agency before to represent me. And without saying any names, I, you know, you, you really, it, it comes down to um, who is in their Rolodex and, I, again, I know I'm live, so I'm trying to be very um, diplomatic about this. So um, 
when you when again when you pick a PR company, it, it's definitely about the Rolodex. So basically, I'm just going to say it: you get what you pay for, right? The, the the really really good ones are really really expensive. So you wind up not really being able to afford them unless you can afford another mortgage, right? I mean, I'm being serious. So what you have to do is do a lot of the legwork on your own, which is you know write these different. Um, producers, write these different radio stations, get on, you know, radio stations to speak, write these different TV shows and, you know, about a certain topic that you are an expert on. Okay. So that's how the legwork begins, writing, letting people know you're out there, letting them know what your specialty is, letting them know that this is something you're excited about. And this is something that you really want to do. Okay. So Unfortunately, if you are not able to pay a second mortgage, <laughs> which would be for a good PR person, you would have to, again, do a lot of this information and, and a lot of this searching on your own. OK, so I currently don't have a agency representing me. I do myself and I have um, a really good team of partners who we work together for the common good mission of Nola the Nurse slash House Calls 101. And we do a lot of the work on our own. And you know, the one of the bigger gig, gigs that I got, and Monet is on here, is when I got on the Harry Show. That's been now, what, two and a half, I think it's maybe be three years now that we did Harry Connick. And really, honestly, I just saw where Harry was promoting the girl who won um, American Idol one year. I forgot her name. She had a new children's book out. And I said, well, if she can get on Harry Connick, certainly I can get on my homeboy show, right? Because he's from New Orleans. So I said, mm -mm -mm, I'm going to start writing him. So I started writing and I said, hey, this is on his page, right? This is on the Harry Connick show page. I just started writing. I said, hey, my name is Charmaine. I'm from New Orleans and I have a book. It's called Nola the Nurse. Yay, Nola, you know, and um, it's a children's book series and it just went all about Nola, right? And what do you know? I think I sent that message on his page um, maybe about 5 p.m. one evening. It wasn't even 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. that night. The producer for his show contacted me and said, what a great idea. We're going to be doing a show about nurses. And Harry is really interested in your story. He's so interested. He wants to buy like 200 books to give away to the entire audience. What? 200 books? Just for me putting myself out there and just writing a note, not sure if they even read those notes, right? Who knows? Who? Kn but now I can attest that they read notes. So if there's, I said all that to say, if there's a show that you want to get on, send the note on Facebook, get into those DMs, you know, on Twitter, you know, there's a whole Twitter campaign. I don't know if you guys saw me here recently doing a whole Twitter thing, like 30 days. I said I was going to tweet every day from Juneteenth to a big producer because I'm trying to get Nola the nurse to the big screen. So I said I was going to tweet and tweet and tweet. So you have to do sort of like guerrilla tactics, if you will, on your own. And you have to be really, really hungry about it. So you have to send messages. You have to send emails. You have to send tweets. Um, you have to send, you know, messages behind the scenes, DMs, whatever you want to call them, all that consistently, not just one time and say, well, oh, I sent it and that's that. Now, I just happened to get, I don't want to say lucky, but blessed in that Harry Connick's producer was watching and, and looking at the feed on his page and just immediately said, oh, let me call her. Let me get back with her. And, you know, one thing led to the next and that got me, you know, subsequent gigs. All right. So that's a little bit about PR. As far as actually, I get a lot of questions about, well, how did you come up with the concept? And, and I don't know where to start. I have this book. I want to do it. I don't know where to start. So there's a book out there called Write, Publish, repeat, write, W-R-I-T-E, publish, repeat, those three words. I can't remember the authors, but these guys, it's two guys who wrote the book, write, publish, repeat. That was my segue into becoming a indie, independent, self-published author. I read that book and 
it was like a light bulb went off. I said, oh my God, this is what, this is me. These two guys are, are, are not, well, now they may be picked up by an agent, I'm sure. But at the time, they they were not signed by anyone. You know, they weren't on any, you know, McGraw-Hill or any of those guys, Simon & Schuster or whoever. They weren't with them. They were just writing, a few guys, just, just writing books because they like to write books. But what they said was, the, again, write, publish, repeat. You follow that. So you write one book. Honey, you ain't going to make no money off one book. Okay, well, I'm just going to be honest. This is about me being transparent here. You're not going to make one money money off of one book. You have to write another book. And not only do you have to write another book, but it's also nice if you branch out into genres. You know, you notice I have fiction, which is big, pretty much Nola the Nurse. But I also have a few more fiction books under there that are not all Nola the Nurse. It's just kind of like a different thing. We have Black Dot, which is something near and dear to me. Then we have the whole Nola the Nurse brand, right? And I have some other things coming out that are fiction. One, again, one genre. That now we go to nonfiction. I have House Calls 101. Then we have Policy and Procedure Manual. And then we have some other things coming out under the nonfiction side, right? So the concept is don't just write one book, but write multiple books. Because at the end of the day, one book is not going to get you anything. Ten books may not necessarily get you any anything. 20 books, oh yeah, now, now we may be picking up some steam here. And when you publish them, you know, you go through all the formats. You don't just do paperback. You do hardcover, you do ebook, and you do audiobook if you can. That's the one thing I still have not done yet. All right, so I haven't done it yet. But you try to do all formats because that pushes your brand out just simultaneously, just like boom. You want that wow effect to all the different formats. So when people are looking at your book, they say, oh, wow. Okay, she's got all the different formats. And then once you get all the formats, then you start switching and put them in all different languages, right? So one of my books, the first book, is not only translated in Spanish, but it's also translated in French. So, you know, it's again, getting, you know, you think global, think impact on what you want to do. And that's how you do it. So, and, and for me, okay, you know, I got to take things, a, you know, another step higher. So obviously with my glitter, right, I've, I've got to, I've got to go to the next level, right? So I felt like in order to do this right, I needed to actually form a publishing house, meaning that I wanted to actually own all of my books, everything, like own, this is intellectual property. This is your writing, your words, your brand, you know, whatever the name of your company is going to be. You need to own it 100%. And so in order to do that, you set your publishing house up as an actual business, as an LLC, okay? You own that, has an EIN, has a bank account, has all that, right? Then you buy you a bank of ISBN numbers. You can get 100 of them. I don't know how much they cost anymore. It's not that expensive. Just get 100 of them, right? And then every time you write a book, you assign your own ISBN that belongs to your publishing house to your book. Okay. Once you do that, you get somebody who formats it. I have someone who does my formatting. I try different people every now and then, but for the most part, I stay with the same folks. Get somebody who formats it. And then you decide who you want the book to be printed by. Unless you want to buy your own printer. Honey, I don't have time for all that. You know, in my real life, I'm a nurse practitioner, right? <laughs> right. I'm a nurse practitioner in real life. So I don't really have a printing press, you know, over here printing books. So I outsource that printing. I choose Ingram Spark. That's who I use. There's several more out there, but I use Ingram Spark and I tell you why. One, the books are quality. They really, really are. And two, I wanted the option of um, hardcover and some of the companies didn't really offer the option of hardcover. So I wanted that option. So Ingram Spark was the best option for me. They do hardcover and they they do quality work. The third reason is that they also have a catalog, whereas most of the schools around the nation purchase their books for the libraries 
through their catalog. So, you know, you have to be strategic about a lot of things. And, you know, there has to be reasoning behind a lot of things that you do. You just can't do stuff willy nilly. You can't just say, oh, yeah, let me just pick any little company and, and that's it. You know, you can't do that. You, you got to think about it. You got to research and then you make your decision. OK, so you find that company. And so, again, for me, it's Ingram Spark. And with Ingram Spark, they have the option. All of the companies that you choose for your printing also has op option of distribution. If they don't have the option of distribution, you don't want them because, well, that means what? If you choose someone that doesn't have distribution, then who's going to distribute them? You? You don't have time for that. You're working, right? You you got other things you're trying to do. So you need some things to be automatic or, you know, push a button, pay for it in the plan or whatever. You still own the company, right? You still wrote the books. You still have them formatted. Now you have all that and you've uploaded your book. Now that it's been formatted, you've written it, you format it, you upload it to, um, yes, correct. Good point, Estesi. A lot of companies don't really want your book if it's Amazon with Amazon's ISBN. Because they figure kind of like, mm, well, this screams self-publishing, right? It screams self-publishing and you don't want that. You want to seem like, you know, you're really, really, oh, I got this French fry line on. It's got me sweating. All right. Anyway, so you... um. You don't want your company to scream self-publishing, right? You want it to scream like, you know what? You are a legitimate publishing house, correct? So the name of my business is a doctor nurse publishing house. That sounds really, really like fancy. Like we have offices in London and, you know, Kenya, you know, we all over, right? Honey, we right here in New Orleans, mm -hmm. a little row house, you know, but Hey, does it sound big? Yeah. And that's what you need to make your name sound like. So there's a lot to be said about the name of your company, either be it a publishing house or when you're starting your own private practice, there's a lot to be said about the name that you ultimately decide. The name, name, name is a game changer. It really is. Okay. I said a lot. Let me check out some questions here. Um, okay. 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 All right. Okay. Well, you know, it depends on what kind of book you're talking about. Are we talking about um, ebook? Because ebooks have one price; they're generally cheaper. And hardcover kids' books or hardcover books in general are usually more expensive because you know, hard. They're durable, right? Paperback is usually not as expensive, um, you know. And then it also goes by book size and page count. So for me, if we want to talk children's, well, you know, that's my vein, a children's book. So children's book, 20 page children's book, hardcover, depending on the size, generally between 12 and 14, maybe $15. Um, paperback can be a little cheaper, probably between eight and 10, maybe. And then, you know, eBooks are around seven, eight, again, depending on page count. Let's see. Hey, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Okay, so, okay, so 8.5 by, yeah, 5.5 is generally the right size. And, you know, paperback, it, it just depends. Again, page count matters as well because, you know, they charge by the pages that they have to print for you, right? So um, that's why it's it's very important you have the right page size and, you know, the page count, because when you upload your PDF, it asks you for all those specifics, you know, um, your page count and the size. Okay. Very important. It also, they also want to know if there's color there or if it's going to be black and white. Also very important because that depends on the charge as well, how much they're going to charge you. They charge you a certain amount for color pages versus black and white. Okay. Um, let's see. So we've talked a little bit about authorship. Let me see if there are any more questions about our, okay. Pages under 80 black and white. It's hard to say, you know, and it also depends on who you go through. I, I, and also the type of paper, if it's going to be thicker, the density of the paper, there are so many specifics about printing and, and, and publishing books that let me tell you, this was a fast moving train. I had to learn this stuff. I mean, really quick. Or, you know, you'll have people who purchase your books and they'll call you and say, you know, page 44 skipped to page 60. 
well, well, what? <laughs> you can't have that going on, you know? So you, you know, it's, I, I guess I had no idea the amount of um, specificity that was involved in um, writing books. It, it's, it's really quite, quite interesting. I love it so much. There's so much um, attention to detail. And that's one of the things that, that I really like. So if you, if you like that, if you like, you know, speaking, getting your word out there, you know, written word, then by all means, jump into it, get your pack of ISBNs, um, get those and, and, and get going and, and just start pushing them out. And so what these guys say from write, publish, repeat from that book is they say, listen, you should be putting out a book. You know, they say they were putting out books like every two weeks. Look, I don't have time, you know, right now, this time in my life, <laughs> y'all know I'm in grad school. I got two little churn, you know? So I just, I, you know, I just, yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't have, I, I can't, I can't, I can't write a book and put it out every two weeks. So for me, you have to do something that works for you. So for me, what works is every quarter. So every quarter I said, I'm going to put something out and I tried something different. If you notice that my latest book is pandemic parenting, that's a little ebook, something new. I decided to go straight through Amazon because of the climate we're in. I wanted something fast. So it's fast. It's quick. It's not that many pages. It's on a cheaper version, but I just wanted to get some tips out there because I get also a lot of questions about, you know, should my baby wear a mask? you know, um, you know, what about hand sanitizer on the baby? You know, you guys, <laughs> it's just, it's, 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 it's a whole lot. So I said, let me just put some tips out there, you know, kind of for the parents, because you know, for some reason they figure Nola, the nurse knows everything. Right. So I got to have, you know, we got to have some tips out there. So I put some tips out there. So, okay. So maybe that'll, you know, get the little inbox, you know, whatever. So anyway, let me see, let me see. Um, Okay, so Amazon makes it super easy. The only problem is, is that, just to answer some of the questions, is that um, the question is, how do I like working with Amazon? I like them. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's no issue really working with them. You just have to be cognizant of you're not going to get all of your profit. Okay, understand this. Amazon is going to take the lion's share. Okay, um, and in, in exchange you know, when you tell someone, it's kind of like a bragging, right? People think, oh, your books are on Amazon. You know, they think that that's like, that's huge. Well, it, it is, it, you know, to the ordinary American who is not an author and in the writing world, being on Amazon, it is a huge thing. And 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 so I'm, I'm, I don't want to diminish that, but just know that a lot of your profits that you would normally get, you, you're not going to get, and you have to be prepared for that. Okay. So I don't want you to be shocked that, you know, and sometimes you'll go on Amazon and they will have your book normally um, retails for $9.99 and it will be on sale for like $5. And you'll say, well, I didn't get that memo, <laughs> you know? So, the, and they don't, they don't tell you, they just run these sales and do these logarithms and just kind of like, okay, you know, see you when I see you, you know, your book is now them, it belongs to them. I mean, you own the IP, you know, intellectual property, of course, you know, you have the ISBN and, you know, you have the Library of Congress number, but um, ultimately it's on their platform. Okay. So um, I, I, I do like them. I do like, you know, having bragging rights and saying, you know, because they've kind of grown into the who's who of, okay, if you've made it to Amazon, you can make it anywhere kind of people. So I, I love that, but you have to also be cognizant of the fact that you're not going to get all of your line share of, of, of your worth there, but you get distributed everywhere because I have people who try to purchase from me in Australia and people in Canada who have tried to purchase Nola the nurse and listen, international is a lot to, to mail, to send. I've gone down to the post office and the book is retailing at $15. They want to charge me $40 to mail it. Yeah. So what I've had to do is I've, I've had to tell people, listen, I, you know, I want to sell to you, but you're going to have to, you have to go to Amazon, you know, I'm on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and that's it about distribution. 
um, with Ingram Spark, they will distribute to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, Target, all these all these places will will have your books. You know, Google, Google Books, Apple, it'll be everywhere. So, you know, either you go with Ingram Spark or I don't know, other there, there, there are tons more people out there. You go with them, make sure the distribution will get you the line share, get you with with all of them. That's what you want, right? You don't want to just go with Amazon. You want to be everywhere. Barnes and Noble. Just everywhere, you know, everywhere. And so it helps if you get with a well-known um, printer company like Ingram Spark because, you know, they're pretty known and then they've been doing it for a while. And if there's a mistake with the delivery, they'll send you a new delivery, which is fantastic. A lot of people won't do that. You know, they'll just say, oh, well, you know, that's your problem or whatever, you know. So it's nice to have a company that, you know, you pay a little more for and they actually do give you the quality service. Okay. All right, so questions, let's see. How did you find Illustrator? Oh, yes. Okay, so, uh, you know, that's a great question. It's a good story behind it. I don't know, you guys, the ones who've been following me now for a while, you know how I went back and forth. I used to have little cute pictures of afros. I'd show afros. Personally, I use a, a, a site called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, Fiverr. That's the name of the site, F-I-V, like $5. Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, Fiverr. Basically, it's a site where you have illustrators, you have people who do marketing, people who do jingles. Yeah, because you don't want me singing, honey. So they do jingles. You have people who do um, brochures, um, people who do logos, um, just everything for you on the site. And, and most of the labor comes from, you know, other countries. All right. And so the labor is cheaper and most of the gigs begin at five dollars. Now, let me just tell you, you're going to hear this from me. Probably again, you get what you pay for. Right. So I don't I, I rarely go to someone who has a gig for five dollars, you know, and you can see all the reviews they have and, and, and that sort of thing. So I kind of stay in middle ground. If I'm looking for a logo, I kind of stay within. Um, I don't know. Gosh. $50, $60. I never pay over $100 for a logo. And with that, usually with that gig, a $100 gig, you know, if I want a really good one out, okay, I'm going large today, 75 to 100. I get five impressions from that, or five different concepts from, okay, here's my, here's the name of my company, Dr. Lawson NP. And you get five concepts from that, which is pretty good, right? So, so, give Fiverr a chance. All right. So that's where I found my illustrator. I just simply typed in the search bar, just like on you go on Amazon, the search bar typed in, I said, um, ethnic illustrators or illustrators who can draw black girls. Some, I'm, I'm telling you, look, I look, when I want what I want, I'm just going to ask for it. I just, something going to pop up. Right. And you'd be surprised. <laughs> they had all kinds of things that popped up. And I said, oh, okay. So it had a, like a bunch of people. And, and, and so I honestly, it, it came down to, I wanted the person who could draw the perfect Afro because I'm so into Afros and, and, and that big, you know, representation of this is a nurse who is black, you know, and, 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 I want there to be no mistake. She's not mulatto, passe blanc. She's not, oh, passing. She's none of that. She's for real, black. And so I needed someone who bought into that concept and could properly articulate it. So I had narrowed it down to about two or three. And then I ultimately went with him because he sent me more of his portfolio. I saw where he worked with a lot of ethnic um, illustrator illustrations before. He himself is Filipino. Um, you know, so I, I felt that he 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 kind of got it and so now we've been working together for five years and he and he's absolutely amazing um he's all he's t also told me that he's gotten more work because of me and now my projects are slowed up because of y'all <laughs> i'm just playing but seriously he's told me he said you know you've got me so much business i'm like yeah now i'm on the back burner you forgot about me 
you know, so it's like, oh, I got to pay extra. <laughs> but anyway, no, he's worth it. He, you know, all jokes aside, he's, he's totally worth it. So that's how I found him. Um, yes, I can maybe give you his name if you, you know, we can do a DM. I don't want to give it all out because again, he's now like crazy busy, right? Every time I send in a gig, he's like, oh, it's going to be two weeks. What? Two weeks? You know me, I don't like to wait. I'm just trying. You, you want me to wait? Oh, you know, I'm giving you the business. You know, what's, what's going on in here? You know, so anyway, all right, let me get to these questions. Okay, right, closed mouths don't get fed, right? Good representation. Um, yep, you have to be specific. Okay, once you write the books, um, yes, good question. Once you write the books, do you have to also have an IP attorney or do you automatically have the IP on the books? Please talk a little bit about that process. Honey, ciao. Ooh, my favorite, my favorite intellectual property. Oh my God. I'm so sweating. Oh guys, please, please. It's, 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 I've got, I bought this diva light. I wish I could turn this around so you can see it. And this thing has me sweating. This is not going to happen again. Oh my God. It's light. It's like, I, I got good light, especially from the first interview we did the one we did like last week or something the giveaways, but this, this is giving me great light, but it's got me hot. I'm like frying like a French fry. Anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna keep talking, but so if you see water dripping, look, it's not no hot flash and nothing like that. So don't get all, you know, thinking you like you know everything. This is just the, the diva light. You know, my good friend Dr. Tammy Singleton said, Girl, get this diva light. You're doing all those little Zoom things and you're doing all those little talks. She needs you as a, a little diva light. I want you to know it's, this light is hot. Okay, moving on. <laughs> all right, IP. IP is probably my favorite subject because a lot of people, especially nurses, are healthcare professionals in general, or maybe just regular people, but you know, I'm speaking for nurses, you know, because that's my field. You guys are my people, right? We don't think about the value of our thoughts and the value of our work, our creative work. This is yours. Like your trademark and your patent is a part of your legacy that can be willed to your children. Your trademarks, your patents, your intellectual property, once it's protected by the feds, the government, nationwide here, trademarks, can be willed to your children. This is a part of your will, your estate. So everything you get trademarked can be given to your children. I need you to think about that. Okay. So it's important because this is something you can pass on. We're talking legacy right? So you want to make sure you have a really, really good IP attorney, intellectual property attorney who protects your brand. Now there's some onus on you. You know, she can do a lot as well. Who, who I'm speaking with, her name is Kimra, Kimra Major Morris, K-I-M-R-A Major Morris. And she's located in Florida, but trademarks, patents, that sort of thing. She doesn't do patents. She just does trademarks, um, which is intellectual property. Um, so she can help you nationwide. So the importance of that is that it ultimately protects your brand. Like Nola the nurse is trademarked. That's the little R signal or, or sign symbol that you see behind everything. Everywhere you see Nola the nurse, you see the R symbol because she's registered trademark. Initially, when we first applied, you see TM. That means, well, we've applied for it. That's the trademark. Yes, you have the trademark. That's good. That's the first stage, which is important. That means, and that lets everyone know, everyone who knows business know that, oh, that name is taken. That's your serious. It's taken. It means you've begun the process of getting things registered. And once you go through that process, it takes about six months. Once you go through that process, then it becomes registered and you see an R. That's very important because that means that's it. You got it. You own Nola the nurse. And anybody else, therefore, that prints Nola the nurse without your permission is subject to receive a really lovely, lovely, lovely <laughs> cease and desist letter from my attorney. Yes, and we do it. We do it ever so sweetly, but you won't get it. You can get the smoke. Yes. Because if you take my name or anything that sounds like Nola the nurse and put it on your products, 
you will get a letter. Mm-hmm. Cease and desist. Within 10 days, it needs to be taken down. So anything that says anything about any of my brands, Nola the Nurse, a doctor nurse publishing house, anything that sounds like it, you will get a cease and desist letter. Now, I need to say this. Attorneys, not just my attorney, most of them who do the intellectual property, they're amazing. But they can't do everything. So the onus is on you, the owner of the company, of the brand, to watch and have all kinds of alerts that go off when somebody types in Nola the nurse. I get a, I get a text, I get an email, bloop, bloop. It's in Google Alerts because we tracing and tracking because people are out here stealing. Yes, they are. And you know it. They're stealing. So you need to be on them. So if it comes up and if it's something I didn't authorize or something that I don't recognize, then I send her a text and say, I need you to investigate this. And I'll send her a screenshot and we, we have conversations because guess what? You've worked hard for your name. You don't want anybody out there just saying, oh yeah, you know what? I want to jump on this bandwagon. I'm just put, you know, whatever the likeness of Nola the nurse on my t-shirt because we want a Nola nurse party for my baby girl. That's great. But you need to first check with us. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you permission, sugar. We will. But there's a process, right? Right. Okay. So that's why that's important. Okay. So yes, it, you know, people always ask, this is another common inbox question. I'm just going to stay on it a little longer. They'll say, well, you know, we're starting this business and should we um, just automatically just, you know, automatically just, just, you know, get the trademark of, of the business of the name and, and things like that. You know, that's, that's, that's a tough call. If you want to get it, you know, right away, it, 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 it just, it, it just depends on the type of business, what you're going to do, you know, um, will it protect you? Yes. If you want to just go ahead and invest into it and, and get into it right away. Yes. But I would say, you know, initially give it some time. You need to see how it's going to go. Are you making money? You know, now if it's a hot name, like initially me, I mean, if you ask me, I go all out. I was like, Nola the nurse, it's not just a name, it's a company. I went ahead straight to the LLC. I thought of the name and I was like, whoo, Jesus, thank you. This is hot. I want the LLC right now. I want the, the, the trademark right now. I want. I, I just went for it. And sometimes you feel like that, you know, and because and I've done now a number of things. So sometimes you feel like that, kind of like, I want to say kind of like Dayton, but I ain't going to say that. Anyway, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you know that you know, you know, right? So yeah, I'm going to trademark that one. Yep. Yep. And some of them you're like, oh, I may have to wait on this one. Just a little bit. I'm going to have to watch it a little bit <laughs> to see if it's going to bring in some ROI, right? Because if it's going to bring in some return on the investment that I've made. So it's not all you know, like right away. You know, you really have to look at it. There are lots of things that will determine whether or not you're going to go in immediately to do the trademark or if you're going to wait. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to answer it and trying to watch this French fry light. Maybe if I turn it off, it's going to, I think it's going to get dark. But anyway, all right, let me see other questions. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yes. Okay. Question is, do I recommend a new grad NP to open a house calls business in a reduced practice state? When you say reduced practice state, are you saying that the state is a collaborative state in that you have to have a collaborator or when you say reduced practice, I'm just, I'm just going to answer it because I may not be able to go up there. A few more comments. Um, I'm going to just take a stab at it and says, okay, do I recommend a new grad start a house call practice? Yes. Especially if the new grad has experience as an RN because it takes a certain level of confidence to start a practice. Okay. So, um, the answer is yes, but I would just make sure you have your support. Other NPs you can call for help or assistance, a question. We all have them, right? Still to this day, I've been practicing as an NP now for 20 years. I still have colleagues, trusted colleagues that I will call because I don't know everything now. I've, I've, you know, done a lot family practice, but there's still a rash. I may come across that, mm, not not too sure about. You know, we have collaborative 
doctors here in Louisiana. So I may have to call my collaborator. You know, it just depends or, you know, may run something by them about a lab report or something. So, you know, you always are going to have that group of colleagues that you're going to call on as a resource. So as long as you have that um, and, and you've had some experience as an RN, you know, you're not a new grad coming out there, just, you know, maybe had two years of experience as RN. Now you're into NP and, oh, now I'm out here, you know. So you know your level of comfort. You know, I knew right off, I had been in, in a nurse for about 10 years or so already. And I said, you know what? I, I think I can do this. Now, granted, I finished NP school in 2000. I didn't open my practice in 2004. But could I have done it sooner? I believe so, at least maybe two years before. But a lot of times you also have to look at opportunities as well. You know, you may be a new grad. And opportunity comes up whereas a physician is retiring and he says or she says, hey, you know, um, I'm going to be retiring. Would you consider taking over this practice? I'll stand back and give you the support you needed from afar, meaning I'm not going to come in and see the patients. Or I'm not going to go to the homes anymore to see the patients. But will you take over my practice because these patients need a health care provider? I'm going to step back then that answer is yes. That would be an ideal situation. And that's the situation that was presented to me in 2004. I had a physician to approach me who said she was retiring and she had 15 patients who were all homebound, in some cases bed bound. And she said, you know, I'm going to be stepping back. I'm not going to see patients anymore, but you know, would you mind taking over my practice and seeing these patients? And Initially, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I was I was not sure if it was something I wanted to do because I had never owned a practice before. Um, but I had done home health nursing before. You know, yes, I'd done that down in Southeast D.C. with VNA. I had done that before. And I said, well, OK, sure. And, and slowly but surely, as I started seeing the patients, I, I would meet with a nurse out in the field and we'd go together in a car together and, and, and see the patients in rural parts of Louisiana. And it was an amazing experience. And, and, and so much, so much, it was so much, um, I'd say joy for me and amazing to me in that I quickly grew from 15 patients to a hundred patients in three months who were all basically homebound, bedbound, in rural areas of Louisiana that it was, it was just an amazing fit. You know, it was totally one of those situations where I was in the right time, right place at the right time. So certainly if one of those situations is to occur and in, in, in your new grad, I would say by all means, take it, you know, call me happy to do consultation, happy to come and visit to, you know, help you to answer questions and, and just be, you know, that support for you. And, and so, so yes, there are some cases where as a new grad can start out and be very successful as a new practice owner. And, and the money is there, particularly if it's in an area that um, needs, um, to have um, primary care, right? Okay, so let's say, hey, Sonia, let's see. Um, okay, yes, anybody liking and subscribing? Okay, you know what? I've been talking, I've been talking, I've been talking. Let's do, um, let's do a giveaway. All right, so I'm gonna do two giveaways tonight. Let me see what time is it. Okay, we've got about, we've got about 20 minutes. So um, I wanna give two giveaways tonight. The first giveaway, well, one of the giveaways, I'm not sure if it'd be first, maybe it should be first. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth. So I want to, I want to give, um, two giveaways. Oh, um, one of the giveaways is this, this is the, can you see? All right. This is the house calls 101 policy and procedure manual. So this book retails word version on our site retails for $3,000 because it is um, editable and it's the word docs for all the procedures and policies and everything you would need for your house call practice. And um, so I wanna give it away to someone who has subscribed to my channel, who's left a comment on the channel, right? And you've invited three friends and they, they've all subscribed and they've said something. So you can't say, all of my friends came, we were all there. So okay. How do we know that? Sugar lump? How do we know? 
So, um, ooh, sweating a little more. Getting away all this money, I'm sweating more. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, you need to like, subscribe, not like, because YouTube is not liking, but YouTube, you subscribe. Subscribe, let's see. Oh, somebody subscribe. Okay, so now you got to tell three friends. You got to go there and comment, and we counting. We counting. So three grand, we counting. All right, you tell them to come, three friends. That's all, three friends. So you and three. One plus three is what? Four. Uno, dos, cuatro. Tres, cuatro. All right. <laughs> don't give me, the, you know, I don't know my Spanish. S is help me. All right. All right. So anyway, um, okay. Four of you, all four of you, subscribe to Dr. Lawson NP YouTube channel. Give a little comment. This video will be on there. This is actually the first, one of the first videos. The other one's. I don't know. We're putting work into it now. So don't worry about those. We're going to be adding content now on a regular basis. So this is the first thing I'm giving it away. Okay. Oh, and you also need to like subscribe on, um, IG follow. I'm sorry. Follow on IG and, and Twitter, follow on IG, follow on Twitter, subscribe to YouTube and leave comments on YouTube. All right. The next thing I want to give away is a consultation session and that's an hour where we get to talk about what you want to do. So hour with me to talk about what you want to do, anything you want to talk about, what you want to do, you know, um, are you going in the right direction? You know, what, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I think, I think that will be very beneficial to someone who, um, is already a business owner and they're, you know, not sure they need to just do some strategic planning as far as, you know, what other streams of income they can bring in to make money. Um, I think it'd be very be beneficial to someone who's just starting out, who's not sure, you know, kind of like what, what they want to do or, or just kind of like, you know, what's the flow or what, what's the next move? Say you have a book. Now what, what, what do we go from here? There's so many moving parts to a lot of things. So, um, I'm just happy to be able to offer that consultation as far as, what to do, what, what I've done, the mistakes I've made. And you know what? I'm, I'm transparent. I'll tell you, I'm still making mistakes. I don't know about all this stuff. I just don't, I just don't know, but I'm the type of person, you know, you have all kinds of people in the world. You have people who look at a problem and say, look, y'all can have that. I'm going over here and, you know, eat me some cantaloupe. Well, that's not me. I'm look, I'm a go for it. And I'm eat the cantaloupe too. <laughs> But I'm still going to go for the problem, right? I'm going to say, look, look, I, you know, I don't understand it. Like the YouTube, you know, I don't understand it. You know, I don't understand everything about it. Like podcasts, we're getting ready to launch a podcast. You know, I don't, I don't understand all the moving parts to it, but that's not going to make me stationary, right? That's not going to make me not want to do it because I don't understand it. Okay. So that's, that's me. That's, that's how I roll. You know, I, I, I liked, I like the adventure. I like not knowing. I like the element of surprise and I love risk. Oh, you know, yeah, every entrepreneur I know loves risk. That's we thrive and live off risk. Right. So that pretty much ha is how you have to be is you have to thrive and live off risk. That's, that's it. That's what we do. You know, the element of surprise is, is, is the vein we live in right? Okay. All right. So I want to give away an hour consultation um, with me and we get to talk about just however, whatever you want to talk about, you know, as far as your business is concerned, where you want to go, if where you are going, does it make sense? You know, so basically it's a big pick your brain session for you. Okay. So what do you have to do to get that? Same thing. You have to subscribe to YouTube channel, get three friends to subscribe. You all all four of you, one, two, three, four, all four of you have to subscribe and leave a comment. Okay. You have to follow me on Twitter, all right? You don't have to talk to me on Twitter. I'm talking to you anyway. I don't care. I'm just talking to everybody. I don't know what's going on. I'm just learning as I go. Somebody said the other day, I still don't know Twitter. I'm like me either, but I got 3000 followers now mm -hmm. in 30 days. Mm hmm honey, I'm on there talking about everything Every, and, you know, everybody. And, you know, on Twitter, from all my folks who are on Twitter, <laughs> you know, 
it's like GIF City. I love me a good GIF, honey. So I will just send the GIF and I'll just be hee haw half laughing with everybody. They think I'm just so fancy. I don't know half the time. I said, let me just find my favorite GIF and say, yep. <laughs> and it's like everybody thinks I'm engaged. And I'm like, um, I'm figuring it out too, you know, but you don't have to let them know. I guess they know now, but you don't have to tell them. You just act like you know, right? Fake it like you make it till you make it, right? So, and then there's IG. I love IG actually. So um, IG is 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 a beautiful place. There's so many beautiful things. It's just IG is is interesting. I, I yeah, IG is IG is. Hmm. So follow me on IG. All right, you guys obviously are here on Facebook. All right, so let me see some more questions. I, I I've, I've kind of gotten stuck in questions here. Let's see. Um, hey, Wanoka baby, how you doing? Hey, Melissa Bogle, how you doing? Sugar pie. Um, let's see. Who do you discuss all your different ventures with YouTube podcast books? Who, who do I discuss them with? Hmm. (laughs) Y'all, right? Remember last week we had just a little chitty chat. We were just talking about me because I was going to be opening up and doing a YouTube and how I wasn't sure about what I was doing, but I was doing it. I slapped that little channel up there. Well, it actually had been up there, but I just kind of revived it. You know how you just like... I'm going to breathe some life into it. So I breathe a little life into it and, you know, kind of spruced it up, put some new graphics on there. Honey, listen to me good. A banner, a really, really good banner will set your channel off. I got that off Fiverr. Yes. Set up there and type in banner under the search bar. Banner. YouTube banner because I wanted to be specific. Mm Mm-hmm. Girl, got me a banner package for YouTube, a new one for Twitter, new profile picture. Mm, see how all everything's coordinated? Five. I think I got the whole package for like $30. Y'all better get into this. I'm telling you, this, this is, is listen, people are into aesthetics and how things look. To this day, I still haven't gotten my Instagram, you know, all color coordinated, but it's coming. It's coming. But the point is, is that people look and that's, again, another thing about brands is that you want it all to kind of like be in the same color vein all. So if you notice, most of my logos are similar. You see a little Afro, you notice the little healthy conversations has a little fro we'll throw silhouette with the stethoscope, you know? So it's all kind of like within a theme, within a vein, people look at that. You'd be surprised if if you don't think you look at that, just kind of start looking at some of your favorite brands and you'll start to notice patterns. This is how people begin to subliminally tell you to buy their products without asking you. Okay. Whenever you see that swoosh, you're like, man, do I need some tennis shoes? I think I do. (laughs) <laughs> I'm telling you, it's 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 just genius. Why do you think their entire degrees in marketing? Okay, this is no joke. I have so many people who come to my course and we'll talk about it. We'll say, well, what's your marketing budget? All right, what's, what's, what, what you plan on doing? How are you going to launch this? Because I tell everybody, say, honey, you can have the best book or the best house call practice around people can, you know, think that you're amazing and you're beautiful. You're great. You, you know, you can get this brand launched, but sugar, if they don't know about you, how they going to find you? And I'm gonna wait for this answer. And usually I'm waiting for a few minutes. So the point is, is that you have to have some sort of a marketing plan or budget. I have a great marketing person who I work with. Um, You may have seen some of her, comments on Facebook and and Twitter and IG and different places. And you see her on this thread. She's great. Her name is Sherry. I know she wouldn't mind me telling her name. Sherry is her name. And, you know, if you want to know more about her, I can, you know, send her your, send you her information. But Sherry has been, been a real godsend to me. It's been helping me out tremendously with just kind of pushing through with the marketing component. She's the one who always says as well, it's like, you know, these people who are coming to your course, the house call course, the only course in the nation teaching clinicians on how to open a house call practice and sustain one. Okay. All right. So, um, 
she's been asking and saying, she says, the people who come through your course, um, do they have a marketing budget? And, and my answer is always like, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what those people, I, you know, I don't think so. And so I wind up asking the question and, and it's always, what you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about a budget? I don't have a marketing budget. And, and that's sugar. That's not the right answer. It's not. So you have to have a marketing budget. Then you have to have a plan. How are you going to launch? You know, because like I said, you can be the best author. You can be the best nurse practitioner. You, you know, oh my girl, Lord have mercy. You know, she's, what do they say? The salt of the earth, you know, bless her heart. She has good bedside manner, all these good things, good budgeting, all that. But honey, if they don't know your practice is open and ready to see patients. I mean, these, we have, we have some people who come to my course who, do not see the importance of social media. Honey, I say this is free all day, free. F-R-E-N-E. -E. And why don't you at least have a page for your business? F-R-E-N-E. -E. I don't understand it. I really don't. One of y'all smart people going to have to explain that to me. I have people who come to my course who say, oh, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in social media. Mm -mm. Okay, so I said, okay. Gotcha. So how how you gonna how, how you plan on launching your business? How, how is this this is gonna happen through osmosis? Because honey, you need to tell me. Because all this work I'm doing on social media, and you tell me I don't have to do that, help me. Because I I'm here to learn too. And I tell you, I'm the first one to tell you when I do my classes, I'm learning from you too. So you got something good where well, I don't have to be on social media. I, I, I need to know so we can figure out how to monetize this. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's no answer. No answer that's free. All right. Sweating to death. All right, we're going to fix this. The next time we talk, I'm going to have all kinds of fans blowing. And this hot light, I don't know. This diva light is a great concept, but I don't know. All right, so let's see. Let's go to some more questions. Um, <laughs> you had no idea. I was so funny. Honey, let me tell y'all, in my other life, I'm a straight comedian. I really am. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. I love me some comedy, and I just cannot be that serious about everything. You just can't be. Why? We got COVID out here. We can't be serious. We, you know, we got the male mask everywhere. We got riots. Lord have mercy. The last thing we got to do is just, is, is, you can't, you, you got to just take it a little easy. You got to be light. You just are too much. I'm telling you, we got a lot going on. Had you checked? Have you been watching the news? We got a lot. So, honey, it's, it's a lot. All right. Let me see. Let me get some more of the questions here. Let's see. Hey, Liz, how you doing, my girl? Okay, yeah, Sherry, 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 Sherry. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. All right, let's see. Um, okay, good. Hey, Heather, I can't wait to see you in class. Hey, Heather, look at you, V. Thank you, my girl. Okay, let's see. What else, what else, what else, what else? Okay, is a healthcare lawyer absolutely necessary? Um... That's a good question. Not necessarily a health care lawyer, but you need to have a lawyer on your team. Okay? I'll tell you why. People are always going to do something to vex your nerves. Vex. Capital V, capital E, capital X. Stay in business long enough, somebody's going to vex you. Let me tell you how I got vexed. V-E-X-E-D. All right. Thank you to my village. I got to give honor and praise to my village who let me know. Started sending me all kinds of screenshots. The name of my publishing house is a doctor nurse publishing house. Hunty, out of the blue. They started texting me saying somebody else got a name of a company 
just like my name, just minus a couple of vowels, you know, like Vanna White, what vowel you want? Just a couple of vowels, a couple of vowels different. People was all in this commotion. People was thinking that it was my company. The person had dolls, stuff, just, you know, sound alike, look alike kind of stuff. When I say vexed, V-E-X, E and the D, we was hot. So happen to have an attorney, you know, you got to have an attorney. You have to have one. Now, because this was in the IP, you know, what's IP guys, intellectual property in that vein, I, you know, punted it over to camera major Mars. All right. Um, a Mars major, I'm sorry, who is my IP attorney in, in Florida, camera Mars major. Right. So that was in her vein, right? That was a vexation that needed to be fixed. Cease and desist, stat, okay? Then you're gonna have other things that come up. Somebody's gonna get mad. You know, people always get mad, just whatever reason. You know, you got Corona out here, folks is upset about masks and just all kinds of stuff is going on. Folks just mad about everything and they will fight you over just, if they fight you over a piece of cloth, you know they'll fight you over something else that just don't have nothing to do with a piece of cloth on your face, right? So they're gonna be mad. All right, so it's good to have an attorney that you have a good relationship either with a retainer. Most attorneys charge, I don't know, 2,500 to 3,000 a month retainer. It just depends, you know? You may be able to work out some sort of barter Whereas you offer them primary care. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that everything's negotiable. You have skills. They have skills. They don't want to leave their house to go to the doctor because of Corona. You offer primary care services via telemed. Do the math. I'm just trying to say you got to negotiate your services and skills with what they have. Maybe y'all could work out something. I'm going to touch on this a little bit. i am got to get off this because we're running. We're getting close to, we're going to go over a little bit, but I hope y'all don't mind. Somebody wanted me to talk about, this is another thing that comes up in the, in the inbox is they wanted to talk about collaborating physicians. Let me tell y'all, everything is negotiable. Y'all out here paying five, 10,000 or whatever a month to doctors and things like that, you know, for collaboration. Listen, that's too much. It's too much. It You got to work out something. What can you do in exchange for that? Can you take call? Can you round for them? Yeah. Can you do some hospital rounding for them in exchange for collaboration? What can you do? What can you leverage? What do you have that you can offer that's a viable exchange? Nobody really likes to round on their patients anymore, hence the emergence of the hospitalists, right? Listen to me. Nobody don't want to be in the hospital. Let's let's be real about this. Okay, they don't. You have hospitalists, but you do have some docs who still want you know see their patients. You can offer to see their patient. Hey, I'll go to the hospital for you. Will you collaborate with me? Sounds like a good deal. Who wouldn't want that? Hey. I'll, I'll go see some of your patients in the nursing home. Nobody wants to do that. And you know what? I don't, you can keep that money. I'll, I'll, I'll go and see some of your patients in the nursing home every other week. Whatever. Make up a schedule. Whatever. What I'm saying is that you have to learn to leverage when you're in the deficit, when you don't have the money, when, when you're really just starting out. I have clinicians who come in there crying in tears and they says, I don't know what to do. I don't have any patience. And he wants this money. He says, listen, 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 listen. You don't have no money. Then you can't pay him. So what do you have? Let's think this through. Let's think real slow. You can offer, again, visit some of the patients in the nursing home. See some of the home health, maybe it's a home health agency may have some patients. Maybe they're a medical director at a home care agency or something. There's something that you can do in exchange for them 
you can even ask him, say, you know, again, it may be hospital. He may have several places. He may have like five or six nursing homes. Some of them do five or six nursing homes. They have schools they go to. You know, they got folks. They got, you know, a whole nother. Pra- they got two, three different prep. They, you know, some of these docs are really, really busy. There's a way if, if this is the person that you've been talking with and engaging, trying to get them to be your collaborator. Look at them and say, how can you be of service? How can you bring value to their lives that's not necessarily monetary, but that will also be very important. And what's more important than money? Time. Time is more important than money. If you don't take anything else from me today, time is the most important thing you can ever give to anyone. Your collaborator, your lover, your husband, your wife, your babies, anyone. Time is the only thing that that you can never get back in return, right? So you can say, listen, I can, how can I lessen some of your burden? Make that deal with them. That's worth more to them than two, three thousand. Now you're going to have some who are going to say, look, I don't want to talk about all of them. Look, give me the Benjamins. (laughs) You're going to have them, of course. Of course you're going to have them, right? They're, They're, of course. But you're going to have some others who say, okay, let me see. As a matter of fact, I do, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I've, I've had, I've had some, some of them who, who's, who, who were doing like research papers, who's asked me to just kind of do their lit review. I've had that, you know, to do the, the reference page, whatever. I've had that, you know? So what I'm saying is that think outside of the box. Don't just automatically, oh my God, I got to come up with this. You know, and and when you're thinking about a collaborating physician, have more than one that you're considering. Have like two, three, four, or you know, go to people say, I don't know where to find them. Honey, y'all go to church? What church y'all go to? And you ain't gotta tell me on here, but I'm saying, y'all know y'all got doctors in y'all church. Everybody I know knows a doctor in the church. All right, now that one doctor, if it's just one doctor, but we might have a little problem. But you know, you still talk to them. The doctors got friends, they got colleagues. So I'm saying you can't give up. You have to have the attitude of, I'm just not going to stop until I get what I want. And 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 that's a little bit about when I was talking to my page as far as I'm aggressive when it comes to business and what I need. Listen, this is your business. You have children. You have to feed. Heck, you got to eat. You got to, you know, take care of your eyes, eyelashes. You got to, you know, buy lipstick. You got to, you know, take care of fingernail. You got to take care of yourself. You got mortgage to pay. I mean, what? who's going to pay that? Look, I don't know about y'all, but this this is what drives me. I got things I got to do. People I got to take care of. I got children. Churn. However y'all want to say, we're from the South. We say churn, churn. So this is what's going on with me. So that drives me. So you got to be hungry. You know, so if you're not hungry, if you're going to sit here and say, well, look, I don't know what to do. I, you know, and I get people like that who come to us and say, look, I don't know what to do. I want you to tell me. I don't know what to do. And I can tell you, but I can't make you do it. Y'all, y'all caught that just then? Honey, I could tell you, I put it on a big old billboard for a special fee. <laughs> oh, okay. Put it on a billboard. You know, I get, what you want me to text you? I uh, What? You want a PDF? How you want it? You want a word? What you, what, what you working with? You know, put it on Twitch. What, 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 where you want your deliverable sent? I can give it to you, but I can't make you do it. Look, I, I don't have them special skills. Now, I know y'all think I'm real special. I, I promise you, I'm not there because I, I'm beyond making you now. now I can, I can give you the blueprint. I can give it to you, however you want that blueprint, but I can't make you do it. And that's how I'm in this. So all, all these questions and all this stuff, this is great, honey. I'm cheering for you. Woo, woo, woo. We go get it. We go, yeah, go, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm do the running man and all, honey. We, I know, do all the dances, all off beat, everything. I can dance with the best of them, but I can't make you do it. Hmm, that got to come from within. You got to want that more than I want it for you. Honey, y'all ain't come here for this church, so I'm going to just, just get on off this soapbox. But that's the problem I see with a lot of people who come. They just like, they feel like, you know, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, Dr. Lawson going, you know, what I said, yep, oh, honey, ain't nobody going to chill louder than me. 
when you got that practice going, I'm going to be like, whoa, whoa, I'm going to just send it. I'm going to just tweet it for you. I'm going to just, you know, put it all out there and everything. I ain't going to do the work. Y'all going to have to do this work now. This is some work. This look, I may make it look good. Got the fan blowing my head, people snapping, make it look good. But y'all know this is some work. Hmm. Fasting and praying and crying over here. Yes, indeed. All the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't see that part, though, because I don't have no cameras on me like the Kardashians. I'm just trying to tell you, it ain't easy. So don't be making it think that it's easy because it's not. All right. But it's extremely rewarding. You know, all types of autonomy. Go to all my kids' games. Go to all the little recitals and all, you know, whatever, brownies, Cubs, Scouts, all them people selling brownies. All Do all that. Great. Perfect. It's the life I wanted, right? But y'all know we out here. It's hard for entrepreneurs. It's really, really hard because when COVID hits and stuff like that, all types of pandemics and disasters and things, we're really affected the most. We are because, you know, a lot of times we don't have Big Brother, you know, there to just bail us out. We got to work and wait for, you know, the CARES Act and all these other people to get some laws and everything to give us money. So there's an exchange for the autonomy and, and the glitz and the glamour. There's a, there's a hard exchange if you're not in the top 100 of, you know, Fortune 500, 500, come with, you know, all the things. You know, if you're not there, then you're a small business owner, which is a whole nother conversation for another day. Small business and you want to add in minority too? Hmm. Add that. So then you got ec extra. As we say here in, in, in the South, you got extra. E-X-T-R or extra problems. All right. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for this today. Y'all ain't ready. But, but, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> I've been talking to y'all. And I'm, I'd say, I tell you, I'm hiding here. This is light. I wish I could show it this light. But, you know, my kind of like my little dresser back there. What we say the shift row, you know, back here in the country. The shift row where you put your clothes. It's kind of all open. You see my clothes all out and i got like some little jewelry all kind of look like a little rat then ran through my little closet so i can't turn this around and show it's french fry like maybe another time when i tied it up a little bit in the back <sighs> but anyway let me see if i didn't caught all these questions because you guys okay let's see all right uh okay Woo -cha. Sean, uh, look look what they say <laughs> you better ask somebody <laughs> i'm telling you it's just Whew. But, you know, the good thing is we're going to do this again. I'm trying to just come on at least. I don't know. I'm talking with Sherry again. Sherry. Sherry's on my page. Somebody Sherry. Look up Sherry. But um, we'll do this again. Figure out when we do it again. And um, just try to come on, you know, at least maybe a couple of times a month. I know she, the way she has it, my marketing guru that she is, I'd come on weekly. But, you know, I got to I got to get this light together. I can't be sweating when I'm talking to y'all. I swear. I just... With the, <laughs> You know, it's this is a thing. This is this is too much. I got to get these lights together. So you know, I, I, one thing I will say is that I feel it's 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 the light is brighter, and I feel like better about the everything the setup than than last week. But I'm just hotter now. It's I, I think I have it turned up maybe too high. So because there's a little dial in the back, you know, I just took it out the box today. Was so excited. Oh, got an Amazon delivery at my house. Yes, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I just took it out and plugged it in, and there was a little dial in the back. You know, I think I could dial it down. You know, I got it up. I think it was like on 400. So whew, I hope you know. I just, I made got a little tan out of this thing. I don't know, but we'll see. Come on next week if I'm if I'm this color, y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway, um, I'm quit playing with y'all. All right, so um, we'll see if I'm if I'm on next week or in another week or whatever. But whatever, I'll be coming back. And and the questions have been good. Um, you guys have sent me a few. If I haven't gotten them all or whatever, so remember to the person to get this book, House Calls One Hundred and One Policy Procedure Manual. Do 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 do. What do you need to do? Subscribe, subscribe, get three friends to subscribe and leave me a comment on my page. That means it's four of you, four, 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 that needs to leave comments and subscribe to YouTube. Um, all of you need to follow me on Twitter and follow me on IG. I'm on LinkedIn too. LinkedIn, I, I don't know. You can, you can follow me or whatever you do, like me. I don't know what's going on on LinkedIn. I'm there as well. 
I'm um a little more refined on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, I'm using like, hello. <laughs> How are you doing today? I will never say extra, extra <laughs> on LinkedIn because then LinkedIn is just like, they're just kind of like stuffy a little bit, you know? So it's just like, I feel like I have to be a little, um, a little more poised on LinkedIn. Like, you know, I can't, it's gotta, I couldn't just be, you know, like talking about how I'm sweating and all that. Yeah, you know, those people on LinkedIn would be like, girl, what? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I got all these antics going on. Cause it's Facebook, you know, we're good. We're good on Facebook and, you know, we got YouTube as well. And I think YouTube is, is a different crowd as well. I haven't, you know, again, I haven't really launched on there yet. So we'll see what type of um, steam this picks up on there. But again, um, got this, giving this away, value $3,000 giving away a um, one hour consultation with me that's valued at 250. And um, there you have it. All right. I think we've got all the questions. Let's see. Got some more new comments. Oh, are they? They in there like swimwear. Hey, you know what? I may get real fancy on y'all for the next one. I may actually have an intro and an outro. Oh, you ain't be tell me nothing, honey. You ain't even tell me nothing if, listen, the day y'all turn this on and you hear music, <laughs> oh, I have, uh, I have arrived. <laughs> Trust me. If you hear an intro and an outro, y'all get ready. We, we headed, we headed to the top. <laughs> I'm telling you, girl, when I, when I get this intro and outro in here, y'all, we, we, we in there. All right. So. Anyway, it, it was, it's been nice chatting with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, we we will, you know, further um, announce the winners. I think I'm supposed to do that this week. Oh, God help me. You know, I'm supposed to do that this week. You know, just help me here. And um, then we'll decide to when this is going to um, lead into um, another Q&A session. And then kind of how it looks, how, how we're going to get this going, because all this is leading to the podcast and, you know, when that drops the whole podcast and, you know, it's going to be on Spotify and, you know, all the whatever channels and all that. So that's a whole nother thing. So we're using these sessions to lead us to that, to, you know, kind of get the groundswell, if you will, towards um, the big release date of when the podcast drops, which is Healthy Conversations with Dr. Lawson. And we will be talking to some very interesting people about some very interesting subjects, not just healthcare. We'll be talking about relationships. We'll be talking about food. That's kind of like my thing. I'm here in NOLA and we, you know, talk about, you know, vegan, you know, what's up with vegan versus somebody around here talking about pescatarian. What girl, what, what y'all, what is that? You know, so what's the difference between pescatarian, vegan, what does all that mean? You know, do you have to take special vitamins? Well, and now people talking about keto and, and what they say, paleo. Oh, you know, some people not, what they say, something about grains. I, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, you know, you got apps, not people fasting. I mean, you just got 16 hours versus 18. You know, it's just a whole lot. So, you know, it's going to be a combination of talking about a lot of things, things that interest me, things that people ask me about. And it's like, I don't know what y'all talking about. Why are you asking me about what? You know, so <laughs> some of those common questions, you'd be surprised that come through my inbox. So some of those things that that um, come to me, I, I will be, you know, using them as topics on the show. And I'm going to have some interesting guests. I already have one really cool person lined up. And, and so I, I can't, I can't say, but you know, we've, we, it's going to be live. It's going to be nice. It's going to be fun. It's going to be unique. It's going to be all about nursing as well. It's going to be a lot of nursing guests. It's going to be irreverent. You know, what's life without a little bit of irreverence? <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> All right. So stay tuned for my intro and outro next time, because listen, when you hear some music coming on before you see me, honey, listen, don't call me. My people call you. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Bye y'all. The light went out. The light went out.
Honey, we're going to get all this together. See y'all. Got to figure out how to turn this off. Okay, here we go. Peace.